Hello, I'm Brother Lewis Montgomery. I am currently the chapter historian for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, Kappa Phi Lambda Chapter here in Howard County, Maryland. It is my great pleasure this evening as part of our oral history project to interview brothers, Brother Rogers Lewis. Brother Lewis, how are you this evening? I'm fine, Brother Montgomery. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, too. Thank you. Appreciate you asking. Assisting me will be my deputy, Brother Anthony Brown. Brother Brown, how are you? I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Excellent. Well, Brother Brown. To Good to see you, Brother Lewis. So, so Brother Lewis, uh, tell us uh, where you're from originally and uh, where'd you go to college? Well, my home is Albany, New York, where I was born and raised. Okay in the uh, ripe old days of 1942. Okay. And um, as I understand, that was an exciting day because I was born at home and it was icy and snowy and nobody could get around. So mm. they had to keep me at home and 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 the doctor somehow was able to get to the house. And nice. that's where I was born and uh, um, lived there uh, until I left uh, to go to college. And that was in around 1960, um, 61. Okay, nice, nice. So yeah, Albany, New York, and I uh, left uh, Albany to go to college at Howard University in Washington, DC. Okay, great. So why Howard of all possible places to go to college? It's obviously a great school. You've heard of the Mecca, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, well, that says a good bit of it. Okay. But real in reality, it was, um, I had some uh, a close friend of mine, of my best friends, and actually uh, uh, he's was an alpha influence too. Uh, and um, my sister, Bob, I went to to Howard University. She didn't graduate from there. She started there and then um, found a man and got married and started raising a family. Okay. And then she went back after she had four girls. Nice. Went back, went back to college and got her degree up at uh, Potsdam State in New York. Okay. So, um, so Howard's general reputation and influence my friends and family, uh, you know, led me there. I didn't actually start at Howard. I started at um, <clears throat> Albany State University, which is now SUNY New York at okay. Albany. Mm-hmm. Uh, the finances weren't actually good at, you know, when I graduated from high school to, to go away. So I had to stay at home and, and mm -hmm. do a year there. Well, I, in actuality, I actually didn't do a year because <laughs> it didn't work out too well. I wasn't happy there. So I always, because mm -hmm. I always wanted to go to Howard. And I said, okay, well, I, got it. But anyway, long story, right. I ended up in Howard just about a year and a half after I graduated from high school. Okay. And powered all the way since then. Okay, nice. Well, we know that uh, we know our history and we know that, uh, that Howard is uh, is beta chapter. So uh, we'd like to know how you decided to become a member of our beloved fraternity. Yes. Um, I think I was predestined to to be an alpha, uh, it took me a while to get there, but um, I, we had some, <clears throat> I mentioned a friend that was at Howard. Mm -hmm. uh, he was actually almost two years ahead of me in school. Mm -hmm. So he went to Howard and uh, and um, of course he took and uh, that, that piqued my interest further in, in uh, alpha. And uh, actually, his father hmm. was an alpha man. Nice. And I knew them very well. That family, we were very close. Actually, we were neighbors hmm. for a long time of time. And uh, so that was the alpha influence there. And if you knew uh, my friend Herbie's father, Mr. Bryan, he, he was a dynamic type person. And um, he exuded alpha them, you know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, in actuality, there was no other choice for me when when the time came. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, uh, that was uh, how I got interested. Um, that was my influencers, so to speak. Mm -hmm. but, uh, when I was in college, I, I I didn't pledge actually in undergraduate school. I pledged when I was 
in graduate school. Mm -hmm. The reason for that was is that uh, I had every intention of pledging when I was a sophomore in college, but my my grades weren't up to snuff. Mm, okay. When I got to Howard, you know, all hell broke loose. <laughs> you had a lot of fun, in other words. Distractions. Uh, yeah, a little too much. <laughs> and actually, you know, it was uh, I was I was always thinking that I I, I might want to go to medical school. I mm -hmm. hadn't decided, but definitely, but it was always in in my mind. And uh, by the time my sophomore year came around, my grades were you know really weren't that good. And I, I knew I'd had to spend the rest of the college years kind of catching up. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So I didn't think it was wise to, to pledge. And I don't think they would have would have actually uh, accepted me. At, at the, I think the mm -hmm. GP average had to be close to 3.0 or 2.7 sure. or something like that. And I, I didn't meet Mark. I was barely getting 2.0. So, mm -hmm. But uh, so anyway, you can you can Imagine what was going on in those first couple of years at Howard. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was a good time, and I loved the place. And uh, uh, coming from upstate New York, with uh, you know, like less than five percent black population, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was like <laughs> going to heaven, going to Howard. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um, we understand. We appreciate what you're not I saying. I, I eventually did graduate. <laughs> I, did, I did come up to snuff eventually. It took a little while. But mm -hmm. but, but Roger, I, I believe you mentioned, I, I think I heard you say your friend's father's name, I believe. Can you call the name of your friend uh, who was the alpha? Can, can you call his name? He's like, Herbert uh, Bryan. Herbert Bryan. He's deceased now. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, yeah, he pledged beta back in, uh, must have been in 1960, 61, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and um, we were actually overlapping in time at, at Howard for a couple of years because mm. uh, he hung around and uh, he, he was in engineering, became an, he's an engineer and he ended up working for the patent office for for all his post college uh, life, uh, but he was the he he kept he kept influencing me to to pledge alpha mm -hmm. while we were there and uh, um, at that time alpha uh, there was uh, <clears throat> omicron lambda alpha was called an intermediate chapter it was not a graduate chapter or an alumni chapter it was it was it was, I think, around in the in the fifties, early fifties. The general organization uh, created or allowed uh, what they called intermediate chapters for uh, young men, men that were in graduate school and professional schools weren't okay. exactly ready to move on to the graduate or alumni chapters. Mm -hmm. it, it was, I think, there was two or three of them that that got started, and Omicron Lambda Alpha was the first one. Hmm. And I think there was another one in um, the Ohio area. Okay. I think that was OL, o, Omicron Lambda Beta. Hmm. And um, and that, uh, uh, I think the only one that lasted for any length of time was, was OL. And then it was in 1970s, I think in the early 70, 1970s, 1970s, the, they, the general organization no longer called them intermediate chapters. They just became, mm -hmm. oh, they became the regular alumni or graduate chapter. But when I pledged, it was called an intermediate chapter. Mm, okay. Great. So, yeah. you, you mentioned Brian. Do you have any other family members who are members of, of Alpha Phi Alpha I, or members I, of I, other Greek my, organizations? My, my, my uncle, my uncle, uh, my uncle George, George Poyer was his name. And actually, uh, he was my my aunt's husband and we actually had we we lived together for for a number of years and uh actually um uh, i remember him pledging as a graduate hmm. at, the, at the chapter in the albany area which is uh, beta pi lambda oh it's, 
it's a, this is a piece of history you might not know, but yeah. uh, your brother, George Biddle Kelly, hmm. was one of the charter members of that chapter. Oh, boy. Wow. Um, he was from he was from Troy, New York. Yes. And uh, and actually, he was a contemporary of my great aunt. Hmm. And because uh, the Albany, Troy, Schenectady area was called the Tri-City area. OK. I love, they're very close and everything, everything intermingled, you know, people live in Troy, went to church in Albany and vice versa, mm -hmm. worked in Albany, that kind of stuff. Albany being the capital was a big employer at the mm -hmm. state, the state uh, government. And actually, uh, <clears throat> Jewel Brother Kelly was worked for the state of New York because he was a civil engineer for the yeah, state of New York. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's a great piece of history. Mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, and actually, I, as a kid, I mentioned mean, him, but you know, you know, I didn't. I just hear people talk about him. You know, people in my family and some friends and uh, talk about uh, Brother Kelly. Brother Kelly, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Jewel Brother Kelly, because my friend Herbert Herbie Bryant, his father was in that chapter hmm. Hmm. and uh, brother Kelly was still alive then. I think, I don't know exactly when he died, but I think it must've been, I think he was in his eighties when he died. So, hmm. yes. you know, so, but I was a young kid, maybe in my, you know, 10 or mm -hmm. something like that, but uh, 11. So you think you might've met him at some point? Oh, I know I met him, but oh, really? I don't remember him. You just didn't I know, know him. I see, I've been in his presence. Sure. <laughs> It's fantastic. That, that, that's yeah, that's, that's so I say he was a he was a contemporary of my great aunt who who fortunately lived to be a hundred and four years old. But uh, I I know that they were contemporaries, and you know they you know Albany as I said the black community in Albany is very small, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. everybody knew everybody. Now tell me this, uh, uh, brother Lewis. You had met George Biddle Kelly, didn't remember it, and I understand that you were younger. Did, did you young share kid, that? Yeah. yeah. Did Did you share that historical tidbit as you pledged Alpha and as you would meet other uh, well, actually, Alpha men? Actually, yeah. The, the 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 brothers in OLA that that were my sponsors, <laughs> like my friend Herbie. He he grew, he was there too. He was yeah, ahead of me. Okay. He, he knew okay. George Brother Kelly. Wow, he knew Brother Kelly, and he um, was your sponsor. He was my sponsor at in OLA, and uh, there were there were two or three other of uh, uh, there was one other uh, fairly close friend of mine, and still is uh, one of my best friends, uh, Harold Minus. He was in OLA too uh, at the time. I, I, so I, I want to make sure we get this because I, I want to make sure I heard it exactly. What year? Were you made? What year? Uh, oh, I didn't say that. It was 1966, April uh, 1966. April 1966. Mm -hmm. And and just say that chapter again for us. So so everybody. Omicron gets... Lambda Alpha. Omicron Lambda Alpha. Right. O L A. Yeah. Hey, um, anybody else in in your family Greek even beyond Alpha? Any other uh, Greeks in your family? Um, other no, no, just my wife. Who's AKA? All right, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's an important one, I would say. Well, well and her sister is an AKA. Okay. Mm -hmm. Her sister. Um, let's see. I my sister didn't pledge. I don't have any other siblings. Um, yeah. See, I think I might have been. the second or third person in my family that went to college. Wow. Uh, I know my great aunt, she did go to college. Hmm. And that was very unusual in her age, sure. in, in, in her, her generation. Yeah, let, uh, me, let me ask this. Uh, you, we talked a lot about uh, your uh, time at Howard. What's some of your best memories as an alpha man at Howard? Well, and 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 I gotta keep in mind, I gotta well, keep in mind that you, you pledge. I'm gonna answer that, oh, gonna answer that okay. a circuitous way because mm -hmm. keep it in mind you um, pledged. When I when mm -hmm. I pledged Omicron Lambda Alpha, I was in graduate school. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And the next year I went to medical school. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I kind of dropped off the map for everything social mm -hmm. at that point, because I was, you know. 
And so I was actually only active in quotes uh, after I pledged for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of like went another focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was yes. all, all, all encompassing. Mm -hmm. uh, but before I pledged, I have a lot of alpha memories. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know? I used to hang out with Herbie, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And they had an alpha house in DC mm. at the time. I don't know if they still have it or not. And all the frats had a house, basically. Mm. The Keys had a uh -huh. house, Captain's had a house, and Alpha's had a house. And there was a lot of partying going on. And I, <laughs> I think that's one of the reasons I didn't pledge. Is because I was yeah. wow. So I had a lot of fond memories at that time when in undergraduate school when I was not, not affiliated with, but associated with socially. Mm -hmm. With wow. a lot of my uh, social activities were with alphas. Mm -hmm. I heard. And, I, uh, okay. and the other thing I used to remember is that um, I don't know if you're familiar with Howard's campus. There was the the lower quadrangle and the upper quadrangle. The upper quadrangle was the big one, which they called the yard. Mm. And that's where you know most of the classrooms and everything was there. But but the the lower quadrangle was also called the valley, which was where all the science majors, chemistry, physics, mm -hmm. uh, zoology biology and all that was down there okay mm -hmm. so i was in in zoology in the valley mm. and the upper quadrangle was they called the yard is where every friday all the frats used to come out and mm. do their thing right mm -hmm. uh my dormitory for the first two years was on one end of the campus the opposite end of the campus where the valley was where i was taking classes so i used to walk from you know, where I was in class to my dorm. Mm -hmm. and every Friday, I walk right past the spot where the alphas used to do their thing. Mm -hmm. It's the, the founder's library, and then there's Rankin Chapel. Right in between was this plot of beautifully um, landscaped area. Mm -hmm. I had a path that came from the valley and went up to the upper corner. And I used mm -hmm. to walk, and the alphas would be there singing, doing their steps, and doing everything, you know, and I used to, and <clears throat> You remember uh, uh, deceased brother uh, Donnie Hathaway? Yes. Of course. Oh yes. He was he was at Howard at that time. Hmm. And you know how well he could sing. And so he, every time Donnie was there singing, you had all all the other best of the campus coming to hear him sing, sing whatever he's singing. And that would have been him. that would have been in the song. Song. And the sweetheart song had all the all the women swooning. <laughs> wow. But anyway, that was that was you know some of as, as an undergraduate that was some of my great experience. I, I wasn't a member though. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. It was after you mm -hmm. know that that was a big influence too. But you know, I as I said, when I started out, my intentions were to become an alpha. When I started, it just didn't happen until after I graduated. Mm -hmm. Great, and great. Uh, that that, uh, but even for that one year, it was uh, it was a it was a, a lot of good memories uh, uh, with my line brothers and uh, and and the, the the short period of time I had with the brothers of OLA. Uh, I heard medical so, school. I, I heard a mm -hmm. reference to medical school, so that that leads yeah. to our next question. What you? Uh, I'm assuming you're retired now, but what did you do professionally? For a living, what what? Yeah, what well, I was I was a, a physician uh, uh, with this, especially in in uh, radiology, for uh, the better part of forty years. Uh, I graduated from medical school in in nineteen seventy one, Howard University College of Medicine, mm -hmm. in nineteen seventy one, and um, <clears throat> from there I. Uh, I, I did a little stint in the uh, United States Public Health Service, the Commission Corps, as a as an intern, and then um, <clears throat> I had some payback time with the service uh, for about two years after my internship. Uh, I don't know if you remember back in that that era, nineteen sixty eight, sixty nine. I think Nixon was president, and uh, he cut a lot of funds for health care. And uh, one of those things was the health professions, scholarships, and loans. 
which got a lot of people through professional school in medicine and other other areas of uh, healthcare. And uh, that was in like in 1969. And I had been going to medical school on both scholarship and loan. Uh, and I didn't, and when he cut those funds, I didn't know how I was going to finish medical school. Mm. So uh, I signed up with a program called called the uh, Commission Corps of the United States Public Health Service, which is uh, another bit of history you probably you guys probably don't even know. But there's five uniformed services in the United States. There's the military branches, which are four, right, mm -hmm. and, and, and including uh, the Marine and the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. And then the, the last one is the United States Public Health Service, the Commission mm -hmm. for, you know, these these uh, epidemiologists and people that like at sure. CDC, they, mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're part of that, a lot of them that are part of that core, which, and they have the same um, ranking and pay scale and everything and be benefits as the, as the other uniform service. Wow. But anyway, I did that. I signed up for that to finish my last, because they gave me tuition, books, fees, Plus, I got a, a stipend of, of almost like three hundred dollars a month. Hmm. That's a lot of money. In nineteen in 1970, 69, yes. it was. Mm -hmm. And I always say to this day, I never had more money in my life. Because <laughs> 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 uh, I, I didn't have anything to spend it on, you know. But anyway, uh, that was and actually that was the same year I got married in nineteen sixty nine. Um, but anyway, yeah. that's how I got through medical school. And when I finished there at 71, I went up to Staten Island. I did my internship, came back, uh, spent two years in the Commission Corps uh, at uh, um, the Park Lawn Building in Rockville, Maryland, as a as a um, project officer on, on um, the early uh, <clears throat> pioneer projects of physician assistant programs, which mm. are... Uh, you know, a big part of the healthcare system now, but then it was just an experimental kind of stuff. And, and they were pilot programs that the government had funded to, mm -hmm. you know, to primarily to to help get care to underserved areas, particularly rural parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did that for two years and then went back and did my residency in radiology at Howard University Hospital. Well, at that, and when I first started, it was called Freeman's Hospital. Hmm. And uh, after my first year, they built a brand new hospital for Howard University and uh, uh, finished my residency there. And uh, that was in 1977. And um, then I got my first job in uh, Baltimore. Um, and um, it was a, a public health service hospital. And uh, I, after about uh, three years, two two and a half years there, I became the chief of the uh, radiology department there, and stayed there for another two years, and and then got enticed to go into private practice. One of our consultants was in private practice uh, in Baltimore, and for about a couple of years, he. Roger, you need to come out, you know, you give, give, give this public health service st stuff away, you know, and and come out and make the big bucks. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, Perry, I said, you, know, you pay me pretty good. And uh, actually, I was looking at making a career out of service, you know. Mm -hmm. it, but you know, things change as life goes on, as you well know. But <clears throat> what happened was that the, the public health service decided that they were not going to do uh, uh, primary care or uh, so they 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 close all their hospitals hmm. and uh, and and only had some outpatient facilities in different parts of the country um, and uh, I had the option of staying in the service mm -hmm. but it had to be assigned to a different place and the only thing they had at that time was you know. Uh, administrative kind of positions and uh i was in an office type guy i wanted to do clinical medicine so i said I, I couldn't do that the only clinical position they had for me was in uh, uh kentucky hmm. uh, you're talking about in 19 uh 78 79 80 it wasn't 
that attractive to me or my wife. Wow. And so I said, no, I won't do that. So I picked up the phone, called Perry, said, listen, I'm ready to <laughs> come out. And he says, you got a spot for me? He said, yeah, it's been waiting here for two years. Come on over. <laughs> so nice. we, I, I, I said, as, a, as the best move I've made in my life, uh, that was in um, 1981. Hmm. And uh, I was the seventh member of that group. Uh, after a year or two, I became a full partner, the seventh full partner. And uh, in a matter of, uh, let's see, by 1990, we had 20 some radiologists in the group. Nice. Uh, a few in. years later, a few years later, uh, this was in the Baltimore Howard County area, mm -hmm. and um, so back up a little bit. Uh, I uh, got my first job out of residency in Baltimore in the public health service, and I was commuting. I was living in Silver Spring in Wheaton, Maryland, mm -hmm. Wheaton, Maryland and commuting to Baltimore every day, and mm -hmm. um, a hike. I got tired after about six months. Mm -hmm. So I told my wife, I said, I got to do something. I'm, I'm going to stop by Columbia, see if they got any houses for sale. Because hmm. I, I used to go past Columbia, I used to come right down 108, going up to, into Baltimore, going down to to, to Wheaton, Maryland, and um, pass by. I used to stop. There used to be a, you know where the golf course is uh, near uh, Fair, Fairway Hills? That mm -hmm. intersection used to be totally yes. different. There used to be a, a, a package store, All View Liquors, hmm. right there on the corner of 29 and 108. And I used to get a Coke so I could make it the rest of the trip back home. And get, <laughs> you know, and going down, uh, I had to do something to keep me awake going mm -hmm. down that winding road. But anyway, so, and I used to pass by Columbia all the time. I said, you know, see these signs out, you know, Columbia, the... I forget what they called it down in the new town or the new city, but anyway, um, we won at one weekend. We came up, took a look around, found a real estate agent, and within short order, we bought a home in in uh, in Longfellow, uh, Harper's Choice. That was in nineteen seventy seven. Hmm. I think uh, that's where we were going, uh, mm -hmm. Roger. Yeah. As you mentioned that, we, mm -hmm. we were wondering oh, okay. how you ended up in Columbia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, 1977. So we, we we in 1977. Yeah, and that was in the, the early part of my uh, radiology career. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, yeah, so that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. and, and, and was that the connection to the Kappa Phi Lambda chapter now that we're in Howard County? Most Kappa? definitely. Yeah, most definitely. I think mm -hmm. Kappa Phi Lambda started, what, 75, was it? Yes. No, yep, 75. 75, yeah. 75 right. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure. the house we bought in Longfellow was right around the corner from uh, 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 Alpha Man, uh, who was, was Kappa Phi Lambda member at that time, um, and he's since he's an Omega chapter, uh, Julius Conway, hmm. and uh, I we be we became friends shortly after we moved to Columbia. He lived on uh, just around the corner on Harper's uh, Harper's Farm Road, and uh, we became golfing buddies. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And uh, I don't know if yeah, you, you, Julius is one of those guys. You know. He was very ebullient and talkative and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he liked to drink. So he, he used to he used to come home from work, stop at our house before he went home, mm -hmm. get a drink. Okay. <laughs> and then go home. <laughs> after he spent after he had not a drink, maybe two. Mm -hmm. And uh talk talk now. He also had a connection with my wife too, because they both graduated from Clark. Oh, Atlanta. Okay. Gotcha. Clark Atlanta now, but it used mm -hmm. to be Clark and then Atlanta University. But she went to Clark. He he was way ahead. He was much older than us. He was, mm -hmm. I think he was in the class of 50. Okay. Oh, Clark. boy. Yeah, quite a bit yeah. older. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, we became, but he was a good golfer. He got me in. He's Max. He's the one that got me into golf. Hmm. And uh, short <laughs> order, he said, you know, come out to the chapter meetings. Nice. 
And uh, that's how I got the, the chapter. And that was back in the good old days. <laughs> so what, what year was it approximately, Brother Lewis, that huh? you, uh, what year was it approximately you, you became involved with Kappa Phi Lambda? 77, 78. Okay. So very yeah. shortly after it being charted. So it was a pretty yeah, small so chapter at that time. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I started out right then. I, I, I knew I, I, I was friends with Julius. I came in, it might've been a little later in 1980. Mm -hmm. It was probably closer to 1980 than, mm -hmm. than anything else because I, 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 don't, I really don't know exactly when I started, sure. but it is in that general yeah, uh, we under, time understand. frame. Uh, yeah. Within within uh, maybe two or three years after I was in Columbia, mm -hmm. okay, so, uh, uh, and because uh, I can't imagine Julius let me go that much longer. No, prob pro probably not. Now you mentioned that you uh, you're retired as a as a radiologist. You said mentioned that you uh, about six years ago. About, I'm sorry, about six years ago I retired. Six years ago, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. What uh, what have you been doing with yourself uh, since you retired? Besides playing golf, <laughs> well. You know, you mentioned golf. I, I I still do play golf, and I I did play golf a lot since I've been there, but not as much as I thought I would. Mm -hmm. Um, and the um, the reason for that is, uh, you know, multiple. The reasons there are multiple reasons, but the main reason was, as uh, you know, Anthony. Before we went live with this program, we were talking about a young girl named Samaria. Uh, who my wife and I have been raising since she was an infant. Oh, nice. Not our child or our grandchild or anything. It was so that's another story. We we were mentoring a young lady and uh, she was living with us for a while. She she got pregnant, had a baby, but she wasn't ready to be a mother. So uh, we we uh, have been raising Samaria since she was, you know, a couple months old. Mm. And actually, she was, she was her mother was living here when she was born. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, uh, so that was, uh, yeah, almost nine. She's nine years old now. And so uh, for six of those years, I, the, the six years I was been retired, uh, her last six years, uh, she's been my full-time job. Okay, nice. Good That's for you. Great. And so uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't play as much golf. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you did something more meaningful. Raise this yeah, little girl. I think so. Oh, yeah. I think so. And and uh, it it's it's really uh, she's you know, she's like my child. You know, I, sure. you know it's it's and actually I've I've done more with her than I do with my own kids. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my kids were young when I was in the the peak. You know, the the busiest part of my career. You know, mm -hmm. and doing it. I mean, we did a lot of things together. You know, I know, but you know, I wasn't changing diapers and I wasn't feeding and I wasn't you know. You know, doing all that stuff that that uh, I did with Samaria. Yeah, that's great. You know, and it, it just so happens too that COVID came for the last two to three years, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> she was schooling at home. Okay, were yeah. you her teacher? And I, and I was not only the parent; I was the playmate, and I was the teacher too. Oh, that's fantastic! That's right. <laughs> so, that's that's right. I kept, girl. I kept, I kept, and, and I'm not complaining one bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hey, Roger, before we go too far, those early days of Tapa Phi Lambda. Mm -hmm. Now, have you held leadership positions or I know I know right now uh, you're in the golf committee. Have you been on committee? That's a good committee. What's mm -hmm. been what's been your, your involvement with the chapter? I can I can I can say that I have not held any leadership positions either as a officer or as a committee chair. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been uh active and supportive of all the programs and mm -hmm. i've been on committees but never have, have taken the 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 leadership roles in those i'm i'm sh i'm sure that that's something that uh uh maybe i should have done but i have i have i have uh reasons that uh you know to me makes sense but may not make sense to to some others but uh I I think the biggest the biggest reason is that all my years in Kappa Phi Lambda, there's never been a dearth of people who wanted to lead. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what you I I mentioned some names Cecil Christian, Dave Barrett, uh, Ken Jennings, 
Ed Young, Harry Evans, mm -hmm. you name them, Calvin Austin, all these guys, they did tremendous jobs. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't, I didn't, they didn't need me to do any leading. Mm -hmm. They had <laughs> an abundance of capable mm -hmm. and absolutely wonderful guys and did wonderful work in uh, uh, for Kappa Phi Lambda and Alpha Dom in general. Sure. But but sure. Roger, let, yeah. let's also, Roger, let's emphasize that what makes a strong leader is having strong followers. You know, well, so definitely, so definitely, you you mm -hmm. you need um, need need people to work with you and sure. support you, mm -hmm. and that's 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 been my 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 biggest role in Alpha for Kappa Phi Lambda anyway. And um, uh, I'm generally not that type of person that wants to take the helm and do things. I'd, I'd mm -hmm. rather be in the background helping sure. out and do stuff, and that's. Uh, I think that's a necessary role. Sure, I think it's absolutely. a very necessary role. I, I had the opportunity to look at some of the archive records for like the MLK breakfast, the golf tournament, mm -hmm. and 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 a a regular name on yeah. the, all of this financial support. A couple of tables for the breakfast is Rogers Lewis, Roger <laughs> Lewis, <laughs> Roger Lewis, yes. Roger yes. Lewis. That, that, so that's, that's, you you that's, served a critical role. That's great, and you know, but one one of the things I've, I'm most proud of in, with Capital Lamb is being part of the Alpha Achievers program. And nice. uh, uh, the uh, when it was first started with Ken and Dave, um, um, they needed someone to kick it off with a, a I guess you call it a lecture or a mm -hmm. presentation or whatever for the first group of Alpha Achievers, and nice. I was that person. I was the first wow. one to. That's, that's talk about my career in medicine and how it is how sure. you know they could also you know get go that way if, yeah if so choose the, the and, first and, uh, lecture that's great yeah. the first that's one awesome. I, I think i don't don't, don't yeah. hold me to this you can check okay. with dave and yeah. ken but i think i was the first one and uh brother sal uh, what was sal's last name he, ken dave barrett and salvador sal waller waller mm -hmm. salvador waller were the three guys that started mm -hmm. It came up with that idea and 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 brought it to fruition. And uh, of course, the first thing they need to do, had to get these group of guys together. You know, I had somebody to talk to them. You know, you mm -hmm. asked me if I wanted to. I said, okay, I'll do it. That's great. You know, and yeah. um, I may probably did it a couple times. And mm -hmm. uh, at and um, you know, and first couple of years of the uh, Alpha tournament, I was on that committee. Okay. With the Moss and. Um, who was the other chair? I think I was a co-chair with the Moss one year, but that's okay. about it. Okay, nice. So you've been involved with Alpha Achievers, you've been involved with the golf committee, and you've been, you know, you were on the golf committee call earlier today. So you've been uh you've Yeah, well, helped, I'm 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 getting help back, help. I'm getting back to the to this to the stuff. Now that I've I've got to I gotta find something to do with my time now that Samaria is well, she's not out of my life, but it's a different role now. She's living with her dad and okay. stepmom and doing well. Well, and so I have to find something to fill the void. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, we just have really just a couple more questions for you, Rogers. Uh, you know, one is going to ask, uh, you know, what are some of your best memories? What are your, some of your best memories of, of being an alpha? You've been an alpha for a long time. You know, you yeah. came in a little different way through the uh, this transitional chapter. What what would you call the chapter? I know it's, it's overcoming. Almost from Lambda yeah. Alpha. It's intermediate. Intermediate, intermediate chapter, yeah. Chapter, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, as I said, some of my best memories as a young alpha man was uh uh of course the the uh the pledging experience is always mm -hmm. a, a memory i think that you <laughs> sure. forget uh but uh it, it it was pleasurable in in many ways and mm -hmm. uh I, I i got to see uh the how 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 the uh the brotherhood works mm -hmm. and uh and and it's uh, it was just amazing how a group of men can come together and, and achieve so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I saw that early on. It was a good good memories. Uh, was my memories as uh, socializing with the brothers at, as a uh, as a young uh, alpha man. And later on, after Cape of Phi Lambda, I mean, there was so many good memories, uh, but. The highlights always been the the MLK breakfast, you know, mm -hmm. just just that that event alone. It's not just for people in Alpha, but mm -hmm. 
whole community. It, uh, it's, it's a memorable occasion every year. Uh, and um, some years better than, than others, but always great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, I remember um, the year that Calvin talks about when Calvin was president and uh, a brother, uh, Freeman Boyer, stepped up to the plate. <laughs> he, 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 on the spur of the moment, the day before, and he came up with a talk, speech, whatever you want to call it. I, I don't think it's been topped yet. Wow. And I remember that day very well. And the circumstances as to, you know, how he got to be there, you know, he just, you know, he just stepped up to the plate and did mm -hmm. it. Of course, he preached almost every Sunday, so you know <laughs> he was ready. You know he he he's he stayed ready with a with a sermon, but this wasn't mm -hmm. just a sermon. This was a a really well put together um, speech essay about MLK, mm -hmm. and that that was uh, that was a memorable event. I I really remember that, and not only just from what he said, but the fact that he he was there to do it. Mm -hmm. he did it oh, uh, absolutely. That, uh, Mm -hmm. I, I want to slip in. I, I know, I think we just have one more question. I just want to go back just two seconds and just applaud. Uh, we we had some thoughts on here. What other civic or philanthropic yes. efforts do you do? And I just want to applaud both you and your wife because mm. when I, well, I encountered you, so you 25 years ago, you all, you're one of these power mm -hmm. couples in terms of service. Your, I don't know if your uh, wife is bringing your your wife is synonymous with. I guess I, I guess I can take and, some of her credit. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I can take some of her credit. Yeah, so she's not on the interview. <laughs> yeah, you know, so with activism and the school mm -hmm. system and making sure that minorities are represented, so I, I think that's worth mentioning. I, I support her one hundred percent. Yes, yeah. I tell her she ought to run for office. <laughs> yes. So, it's not too and anyway, you know, in 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 terms of other things that I do, I bet I for the last four years now, almost four years, I've been a, a board member for an organization called Bridges to Housing Stability, which is a uh, nonprofit uh, organization in Howard County that uh, is striving to end <clears throat> homelessness and okay. uh, bring a. a <clears throat> home stability to, you know, the, the community that is marginal in terms of their mm -hmm. housing stability uh, for one reason or another. I've been doing that uh, for three years, four years now, and I uh, really get a lot of enjoyment out of that. Um, and because uh, we, with uh, Samaria and her uh, family situation, we've had some personal experience with homelessness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, that 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 has uh, it's been one of the things that I I, I really uh, uh, find uh, enjoyable and and uh, useful to do. Yeah, that's I, great. I think Brother Lewis gets the last question here. Yeah, I was actually gonna, I was actually going to let you have it, Brother Brown. Hey, okay, I'll, what I'll, is I'll, it? I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> hey, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha was the first Black Greek letter organization founded in 1906. So that's more than a century ago. Why is Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated still important or relevant today? Mm, well, kind of a no brainer, really. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, it was uh, Jewel Brother. Um, Callus that said that the task of uh, the fraternity are endless, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think uh, it was still relevant. There's still a lot to be done. Mm -hmm. Things and and you know the um, the uh, the hymn that we sing so often, you know, talks about manly deeds, scholarship, and love for our mankind. Tell me when there's a time that that hasn't been more relevant. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know. I mean, what's going on today with, you know, 
black man in society in general, mm -hmm. you know, uh, could stand for a lot of those things, and particularly uh, love for our mankind. Mm -hmm. uh, scholarship, you know, without education, you know, our lot's not going to change much. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, manly deeds, we know, know what that's about, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what the current attorney does. They take young men and show them how to be men, be grown men. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, that's always relevant. Yeah. What an amazing life. What an yeah. amazing story. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. it. Yes, absolutely. So, brother. Well, thanks for the opportunity. And um, I hope you don't have to do too much editing. <laughs> no, no edits were required. We'll get it. Just thank you again for your time. But more importantly, Thank you for your leadership. Uh, the theme of this oral history project is something that Ken Jennings said early on in this, which is standing on the shoulders of giants. And uh, you've been a giant within the fraternity and uh, and we are standing on, on your that. and other brother's soldiers. So thank you for all you've done. And it's our pleasure to uh, to call you brother and to capture your story. Thank you. 06. 06. Okay. <laughs>